Hey everybody, it's Merlin here. I oh, hope you're having a wonderful day. Just thought I'd say hi and kind of do a little random video uh, that is not entirely random. Random in the sense that I'm doing it right now, but there is a reason for it. Uh, basically, uh, we are coming up soon to a very important day to me, uh, November 4th. That is my birthday. And I actually wanted to kind of talk about a movie that's kind of closely related to this date, and that would be V for Vendetta. Now, some of you guys might know the quote uh, <laughs> that I have to hear, or if I don't hear it, I often do it myself. Remember, remember the 5th of November, which is celebrating Guy Fawkes Day. And that's from the movie V for Vendetta, where the character of V blows up Parliament, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess, to rebel against the corrupt government in that dystopian society that is portrayed in that film. And since the birthday that I have is so closely correlated with the events of the movie, the opening scene actually takes place on the night of November the 4th. And I was like, you know what day it is? It's November the 4th. <laughs> Tomorrow's November the 5th. And so this is kind of a movie that is very closely related to something in my life. And it also kind of helps that it's a movie that not only is the date so significant and so close, I mean, it would be even better if it was the 5th, but I guess it, it's a good thing it's not too obvious. It kind of helps the fact that I actually really like the movie. Um, it's a comic book adaptation. It's actually based on the graphic novel from the 80s, uh, which I'll confess, I've never really gotten all the way through. I've, I remember I skimmed through it once. The problem is I found the movie first, and uh, it's, it's one of the few cases where, I mean, usually I'm pretty good about reading the comic book adaptations before the movie comes out, but that was one where I, I guess I saw the movie first, and that's kind of right when I was starting to kind of dive really into comic books, uh, kind of when I was in high school. And uh, V for Vendetta, I just thought was such an awesome movie. I tried to read the comic, and the thing that actually put me off from it that I noticed was I didn't really like the art style that much. Uh, but I also noticed that it, it seemed like it had a slightly meaner streak to it. Like the character of V uh, just seemed like a very different character, and he was uh, from what I've read about it. But So I'm not really talking so much about the comic. I'm really talking about the movie because while the movie did make the comic more relevant, I think the movie has actually really exceeded the comic book significantly in popularity. I mean, V for Vendetta, that movie around 2005, 2006, I remember when I first saw that movie, it was one of those films that, it was kind of like right at the peak of when comic book movies were really starting to be um, created and just brought forth much more consistently. And, man, it was everywhere. Like, it was a really popular movie when it came out. And... I think that the hype has died down a little bit, but I mean, more than 10 years later, you know, there's still the significant pop culture effect it's had. Like, you see people do the Guy Fawkes mask, and when they're wearing it around Halloween or whenever, when they're going to costume stuff, they're dressed like Ms. V. Chances are, if you see the Guy Fawkes mask, if you didn't know what it was before, you definitely know now, and it's very likely you probably associate it with this movie. So, I mean, it has had an effect, and the question is why? Why has V for Vendetta been a film that has had such a an effect that it's still kind of thought of mostly fondly, and people definitely know what it is. Well, it was, uh, basically, it was written by the Wachowskis, and I believe it was produced by them too. You guys might know them from The Matrix, and this was kind of like one of their big things after The Matrix. If I believe it was kind of their first big project that was actually separate from The Matrix trilogy as an entity, at the very least one of them. And... I think that's it's funny because a lot of people probably would associate them with a lot of the high octane action and don't get me wrong there is some good action in the film like I think the martial arts and the sword play is definitely something and there are some good works with explosives but it's not exactly an action movie it's more of a thriller mystery uh, there are some dramatic elements in there a little bit of a romance political thriller I guess you could call it but it's not really an action movie even though there are a couple really good significant scenes with action in them but what else about it is good? Well, I think those action scenes are good. I think it's very quotable. Uh, I think that they managed to take the elements of the comic that might not be quite as popular, not quite as accessible, and they, they made the character V someone who is more sympathetic than I think he was in the comic, and he just really charismatic, and he had a sense of humor. He was really balanced, and he could have a mean streak. He seems like a very human character, and a bit tragic, but I don't think his tragedy handicaps him. I think it's a strength, and I think his other personalities aspects are a strength as well. And I, I have to say, the 
just I think it was mostly the voice work of Hugo Weaving. You know, you know him obviously as Agent Smith from the Matrix. He was also Elrond in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, among other things. I mean, Hugo Weaving is a good actor, uh, even if he was kind of cheesy as the Red Skull <laughs> in Captain America. He was still pretty good. I like Hugo Weaving a lot. I think he's definitely. I can understand why he was perfect for somebody behind the mask because. The most distinctive thing about him, besides, I guess, his face, is he does have a really, really good voice. A very commanding voice when it needs to be, but it's, it's deep, but it's also soft, and it's uh, very pleasant-sounding. You know, he has a really good voice, and it, you know, it has that combination of soothing and commanding, which I think worked really well. And his performance is really good in this, really, really gets involved with the character, and seems to focus on every word so good like when he does that big monologue using all the the v's with all the massive alliteration like man how many takes did that <laughs> require i'm not sure <laughs> how many takes did that take but you know that was that was really awesome as well i think the costuming was really good i think the mystery uh, for the film works pretty well uh, i i want to say that you can kind of see where it's going uh, but I, I think there's some interesting allegories and commentary on some possible theories people might have in regards to government in relation to the people and what the government may do sometimes. Uh, it's not, not always perfect. And, you know, it, it's... I think when it came out, it was at the height of the Bush administration, so I, I'm pretty sure that the filmmakers might have pushed it so that it could fit more into a, a category that Americans could find accessible. It definitely has that vent where it's very, you know, anti authority, anti-government, and, you know, obviously it's a bit exaggerated because it's dystopia where the government has, you know, it's completely oppressing the people. But it's, uh, I think, a good commentary on that and just the possibility that, you know, we have to be kept in check sometimes, and hopefully it never gets to the point where you'd need somebody like that. But I, mean, I guess he's, he's kind of almost a, a vigilante <laughs> terrorist, but it, it does create some really interesting ideas about the nature of what the government does to the individual and the repercussions. And I think um, another reason why I really like V for Vendetta, uh, and, and I've noticed this uh, in a lot of movies that I actually like, <laughs> I'm not sure what this says about me exactly, but I find that uh, most of my favorite movies, or a lot of my favorite movies at the very least, tend to be revenge films. And V for Vendetta, I think more importantly, is a really good revenge film, in addition to being a character study. I, I think you really want to see him get at the people that, that took him down. You want to see them get retribution. And the thing I like about it is that even though there is, there definitely are some evil guys. You've got John Hurt as the evil, you know, the evil prime minister dictator guy, and you've got some other evil government people. They also show that not everybody involved in these things was necessarily evil. Sometimes people are just caught up in these bad situations. And I like the fact that they show some dynamic. I think Stephen Ray is good as the detective. I also really think that Natalie Portman, uh, you know, if... I, I feel like Hugo Weaving does a really good job bringing V to life, but it, I feel like this film is only is only as good as whoever could have balanced him out, because you could have had a really good guy in the suit, but I feel like it would have been flatter, because a big part of the story revolves around her character and her evolution, because she is kind of witnessing what we're witnessing. And that scene where she gets thrown into prison when she says she won't betray where V is and give that information, that that whole sequence, uh, I remember thinking it was one of the most powerful sequences for a long time, and uh, there were actually some kind of jokes about the uh, <laughs> about some of the lines she says afterwards, like after what she goes through, she makes a comment about her hair, but uh, no, that, that whole monologue about uh, everything uh, that she's going through and her connection to the letter she finds with the one woman who was kind of criticized uh, for being a homosexual and then for speaking out against the government. Uh, just, just that really always gets me emotionally. I think that's probably the most emotional part of the movie for me. And I, I guess you can almost kind of see that, that they're <laughs> what they're kind of trying to do after a certain point, but the first time I saw the movie, I was so absorbed by what was happening that I could believe it. It's, it's done in a way where everything's kind of kept shadowy so you don't know exactly what's going on. But, I mean, as far as the film's flaws, uh, I mean, maybe it's a little preachy. Maybe it's a little bit corny at times. I mean, you, had, you have to have some corny one-liners. Uh, I think some of, the, some of the villains could be seen as a bit one-dimensional. 
uh, I think that th there might be some parts of the backstory we could learn a little bit more about, maybe a little bit more about the government's plot to do what they did. But for the most part, it works pretty well. It's mostly about V's character and the character of Evie with uh, you know Natalie Portman as well. So I think if we kind of focus on their balance primarily, th that's the most important thing. But it flows well. Uh, there's some really trying scenes. I think that the film, even though it has kind of a sad ending, I don't really know if it could have been much better. Uh, I think I think there could have been a lighter ending, but I don't know if it would have been as impactful, even though I think a lot of people watching it probably would have felt, you know, hey, <laughs> that would have been pretty cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I had to say about V for Vendetta. I just kind of felt like it's a movie that I, I kind of quote to myself, and some people bring it up to me if they're movie people. So it's a movie that is kind of slightly connected to my life in a more real way as I celebrate my birthday coming up this weekend. Um, but it's also a movie that I really like, uh, and I want to talk a little bit about it. So if you guys like V for Vendetta, let me know in the comments below. I'm not sure about uh, videos coming up. I've got a couple more podcasts planned out. Uh, probably some other videos down the line when I have time, but, you know, things have been busy lately. Just had a moment, so I thought I'd do a little video just on this. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you have any other thoughts or ideas for other videos you'd like to see, please feel free to check this in the comments below, or you can check out my other channel where I can talk about other things might not be as anime or comic book related.